Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. It is May 2025. Uh, trying to want to do a YouTube video for you guys on a service upgrade. Um, I know I've done a lot of those. Our code is changing in 2026 of June next year, which in Northern Colorado, um, yeah, my uh, Larimer County, Weld County, Loveland, Berthoud, Fort Collins, Estes Park, all the six jurisdictions that I do are permits on my service upgrades, um, they always stick to the new code book coming up. I just did my class to finish up my 2025, which is the 2023 code cycle. Uh, there are going to be some more changes coming for residential. I don't know how much yet until I get to next March and I start taking my class for that. But we do about a weekend a year. Um, I suppose some guys do it online, but I like to go to IAEI, Independent Electrical Inspectors Association. I am not an inspector, but I love to rub elbows with the guys and see what they're up to. Um, maybe one day I'll be one. I don't know. I'm hit, I just hit 50, so who knows? Maybe in 12 years I'm done with addicts, but luckily I've got my boys helping me out. My son is a, uh, Jathan, he's a, getting his second year uh, finishing up. He just got a 96 last night at IEC. So kudos to him. He's definitely smarter than his dad. Um, but yeah, he's he's a second year. I think he's going to try to test out for his RW. My other son, Grayson, who's holding the phone, he's graduating uh, this Saturday from high school. So um, he's going to probably join the trade too. We'll see. And um, But yeah, it'd be exciting to have these guys up on board. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I wanted to show you guys, if you have a panel, this house is 1940 in Old Town, Fort Collins, and I do have a permit. Um, this arc mark, go ahead and show them. This little main breaker, 100 amper, square DQO, these things are not that tolerable for welding or wood shops. So I know a lot of you guys in the Old Town of Loveland, Fort Collins like to try to be uh, starting a business out of your home. This guy cannot handle it. So it had to go. Um, and yeah, so you don't want to keep what you have, like your meter outside, and just replace your panel. You're not allowed to pull your meter. I just saved a person in January in Berthoud, and I won't say the name, but I won't do it again. I literally felt that the panel was borderline and um, got them by. Uh, I like to call it the belly ache of complaining that their tenant you know, put a welder in and, and started welding and wrecked their panel. So I kind of, I felt for them, I understood a little bit there, but I said, hey, can you get this done here by spring? Sure, no problem. I always follow up on my bids. At least I try to. Um, and anyways, yeah, so no, somebody came out and um, found out last week, wasn't me, but they popped the meter. I just want to let you guys know that these are net meters. So they do display the four columns of the power, the meter's been pulled. If you pull it, the power turns off, and therefore it can signal them because they are RF radio frequency meters. Um, it's no longer like the old school analog digital or the analog that spins a disc and turn it upside down and you can spin it backwards and get power from the power company. It doesn't work like that. But these net meters are designed to be face up and not tampered with, okay? So if you pull it, you gotta update the current code, even if your panel fails, okay? If, if they give you an allowance in another area, I don't. You need to go to safer standard, and I'm going to tell you why. This little number eight was supposedly the ground in the panel. And this thing was so corroded in the basement from 70 years, they barely had a ground for the home. So we had to drive two eight-foot ground rods, which I'll kind of save you from the detail. You know what those are. They're five-eighths inch zinc rod or a copper. But that ground wire went here. And we got one here and one down there. And then we shot in there and hit the cold water right below where the gas is. And the, that part was unfinished, luckily. Sometimes you gotta cut drywall. That then was the reason why I went that far because I had all the cement and I really didn't want to drill it. Um, plus I had to pick up the cold water. It is 150 amps, so 250 uh 102c i believe and also 250.64 250.53 52 all talks about our secondary and primary grounding for electrode system this is the number six the bare minimum you're allowed in the code is a number eight but then you got to protect it for 250 that says 
anything smaller than a number six bare copper solid, you have to protect with a piece of conduit, which then therefore you don't use EMT, you gotta use PVC, otherwise you gotta choke both sides. So I don't wanna do all that. So I just run a number six or a number four. I put my inner system body bridge bar. I believe that's 254 ish somewhere in there, 97. Um, but yeah, that's, that's grounding for your, for all of this mess of coax, right? These guys are just horrible in Colorado. They just add stuff everywhere and make a mess. Well, we're going to clean some of that up because actually his fiber comes in over there and he needs none of this anymore. He actually wants me to cut these telephone lines, so I got to make a phone call. I can't just cut that, I don't think. I got to ask the power. Actually, I'll ask the inspector when he comes out today. So this is a whole cabinet where you can see the cut out the meter to shut it. <laughs> I might try to bore him a big hole. I got an eight inch uh, hole saw bit. <laughs> Once I place that today, then we'll know. But see, today's standard, you have to have the bypass lever, guys. What is that? It, as you bypass the lever, the power disconnects so the meter guy can put it in without it arcing, and he doesn't have to turn it off. It does have the fifth, the fifth wire, the bleed off. There used to be a number 12, that's a number 10 now. And that's the fifth jaw bleed off. These are, a lot more solid compared to your old meters and this 150 amp disconnect breaker this thing's a 22k that's 22,000 aic fault current rated what does that mean uh it basically take a lot of abuse guys but under the conditions of where the wire comes in the circumference size you can go to a busman app and actually download it your transformer size is um your impedance of your transformer at six percent if it's aluminum copper if it's direct buried if it's overhead blah 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 it'll basically tell you that his meter underground that way the transformer which is about 200 feet it's it could do a 10k but the new ones come with a 22k and a bolt-on these are really beefy these you could weld on this panel and this is a feed through lug system so you could do a 150 amp this does have a couple splices here that way we can do a either a eight circuit or 16 but basically I'll put in my surge protector here, which you have to have to code by the main disconnect now as well. So this is an all in one combo panel. They're not cheap. They got expensive after COVID and they did come down a little bit, but that thing jumped three times the price during COVID. This is your old little meter with your meter connections. That's it, nothing more to it. But by code now having a surge protector outside, it does protect you guys. And that jumps around the code all the time. The 230.85 talks about it in services and also 242 under voltage regulation. So this is your surge protection. And it is a type class two stab type neutral here. Usually you got to trim that off and pop that puppy in. And how does it work? Well, it's magic. You can Google and AI anything you want. But yeah, these puppies pop in now right here. And guess what? I've got a 100 amp breaker here to feed a sub panel in there. And then also I'm gonna have to have two spots left for solar. That's wise. And I got two more spots for a hot tub or I can put a quad in here. But my two pole that's gonna feed going into the house. Yeah, you can't quad those. I'll probably end up giving him an outlet out back because he doesn't have an outlet. And I'll pop in a number 100 amp breaker to feed my sub panel. I usually like doing my add a lug right here. Pop that at the bottom and then I'll give him an outlet in the bottom there. And now I've got room for solar. And then if I need a hot tub, I can do a 2050 quad and boom, he's got enough space. Love this panel. I'm a Siemens fan. I'm having a hard time finding this on Amazon. So if you watch me, Jeff, Bezo, Bezo, whatever. Please start putting these back online and quit getting rid of that this year, guys, with all these tariffs and this crap going on. I'm not going to get into politics. I don't like any of them. But look at this. This is actually being sold without it. Now. Guys, I've been putting these in for 17 years with Excel, almost 18. And then I came down to Loveland, Fort Collins and started working here when I moved back where I grew up about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And then they started putting them in. Like, guys, this bypass lever has to be in. You guys can't make code the only way you want and then sell the stuff online like tamper-proof plugs that are non-tamper-proof. What's the point? You have to tamper rate them. That's been since, like, 2011. So, anyways, guys, right in here, the thing you got to think about is this dirty, ugly box right here is sitting in a bathroom, a landing of a stairway, or a linen closet. 
or if it's literally like this with a washer dryer or a counter permanent or like i love to see in old town fort collins with all you fix and flipped guys who put lipstick on a pig and you put this in a damn cabinet like what get a brain how do you service that the bottom line is guys this has to be in a location i hope my inspector's okay this is a much bigger hole because it's a much bigger panel this is a copper rated bus bar you don't have to have it i just like these and look, it's got all the teeth so I can quad up this panel. I got some nice neutral bars coming across and grounding bars on both sides. And then this comes out, of course, because my disconnect's outside. But yeah, that puppy's going to sit right there. If my inspector gives me a hard time about a quarter of it coming over the, the counter, I don't know what to tell him. There's nowhere else to put this thing. If you move the panel to another location and you move all the branch circuits, you might as well gut your home and rewire because you have to meet 210.12 and 210.8 under GFI protection, arc fault protection, plus the fact that your multi-circuit shared with your black, red, and white. So gut your home and we'll definitely give you a quote. But if you don't want to do that, you got to turn that into a junction box and figure out how to do a panel somewhere else. That's the trick of the trade. But you can't be further than six foot from connection to connection on those. So I didn't write the code. I just have to live by it and enforce it. But bottom line, that happened in 2008 code. Um, so arc fault's been around since 2002 and they definitely implemented the whole home by about 2011 so anyways guys thanks for joining us i just want to tell you yeah don't pull your meter don't have your handyman electrician pull your meter pop your panel out guys if you have a main disconnect outside and your panel burns out then yeah you can kill the main disconnect if you're not going to upgrade but the power company had to confirm am i still rolling had to confirm, guys, that they could go up to 150 amp. Why is that? Because the power company came out and confirmed the size of this wire right here. And this wire is actually not a number four. It looks like a number one. So they allowed it to go to a 150. They are the ones that decide that. If you have an aerial cable overhead, there's a little bit by 30%, in my opinion, more lenience on the wire size to the, the main breaker, maybe almost 40%. But it talks about that in 310 16, 17, and 18 also. So the bottom line is anything drug buried around here back in the day, all of it's drug buried. There is no conduit. This is just a sleeve. See that? In fact, if that was a metal sleeve, I get to chip that out and pull out the IMC and put in a PVC because they don't want it rusting. So, yeah, guys, I'll give you another video when this is all done. I got to get this done really quickly, but I do do my grounding like two weeks before, so I don't have that pressure today. That way I can get all this to fit and still get my inspection, get power on same day. Um, but thanks for joining us, guys. Hopefully that'll help you out, and please do the right thing. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. Thanks.